If anybody starts swearing, that was all recorded, all right? <laughs> this is recording everybody now. <laughs> Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna talk about Sir Michael and the surrounding area. This is Glenmore House, as you know, as the bird paradise. Oh yeah. That's Glenmore House, that's the front of it there. Now this is, as you know, it's built in 1862. This is all before the hospital and everywhere else. But this, as you can look at all here, all these here was where the horse, some of the horses from the Arvis family, this is where they lived at Bird Paradise. And then they would go down then to the foundry itself. Now I will, and of course the foundry from Harvest Foundry came into Hale in 1779. And they carried on until 1903. Right. This is inside. Of, I got permission of the Bird Paradise man to go in and have a look in there. This is what. This was as it was. Well, basically, I think the carpet's been changed, but it's been since 1862. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the Downs. This is just a little drawing of the Downs. Edmund Setting, 1831 Briola till 1868. He designed the Downs. As we know them the, now. I've been are. in there. Sorry? I've been in there. She was on holiday in there. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> now, the gardens, which are seven acres, were designed by his nephew, Dando Setting. You'll see some coloured ones in a minute. I'll just put these in here now. This is the Downs of Yorla, built in 1888. Now this was built for Mr. Rawlins. He was a manager of Harvest of Hale. Now he had him and his wife when they got married, but they were, so he was born in 1848 and died in 1934. She was born in 1853 and she died in 1936. But they had a daughter, one daughter uh, called Kitty, Kitty Rawlins, and she married the first grand bard of the Gorses, Henry Jenner. His wife was called Kitty, and these was where her mum and dad, they had this built. As you said, you've got all this there. That's the Downs, 1888. Now, the gardens, there's, there's St. Michael's there, but all these gardens is seven acres of, of um, grounds there. I put this in as well, because down this here was the school. They had a school down there as well. Here we are, I got him, uh, and that dando, well, I didn't remember that. I didn't remember it, his date of birth, so it was 1838 to 1891. Now, my late father, for the last eight years of his life, worked in the gardens for the nuns, for the daughters of the Lake the Edge. Yeah. We, as a family, we were never allowed to go in there because it was a closed order, as we call it. Mm -hmm. We were never allowed to go in there, but, well, I would say four, just before COVID, I was given the privilege, I went up to the over there to the Downs, and I got the, the people now because it's a care home now. Yeah, that's right. And I got permission to walk in the grounds where my father walked. Yeah. And he was there for nine years of his, the last I nine years of his walk. life. Well, after I had the sepsis, I spent two months there in the Downs, and I, I sort of got my legs working again by walking around the grounds yeah. with their two puppies. Oh, right. Two yes. like Labrador. Yeah, they, oh, I yeah. used to love going for a walk. Yeah. But I will tell you this is a true story because I don't, you know, I don't tell lies. But my late father, when when years ago, um, you had to retire at sixty-five. You had no option but to retire at sixty-five. My father loved it there so much because he was, I mean, he, he was disabled in the war, but he worked all his life anyhow. But um, when he, the day he come to retire, he got that upset. That they had to put him in the hospital and sedate him <laughs> because he couldn't cope. Well, because he had one arm, you see, he couldn't yeah. cope, he didn't know what he's going to do, he couldn't yeah. drive or anything. Well, anyhow, he said, you know, he says, when he woke up, three o'clock in the morning, he didn't know if he had passed away or if he was in another thing, because when he, when he woke up, there was three nuns, three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> praying around his bedside. And that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got that. I'll show you that in a minute. Let's yeah. just show you there some Michaels. We go on from that. I had to put an aerial view in of the gardens. Now the school, we know it closed in the early 1970s. The school closed. 
I've been trying to research when I knew I was going to do St. Michael's today, but I've, I've spoken to a couple of people. Of course, there's no nuns, as you know. In 1976, it went over to NHS. Sorry? No, I was going to read. Oh, I thought he was going to say that, yeah. <laughs> we believe that the school, being a Catholic school, opened in the 1930s. This is in the early 1970s there. This young lad lives in Hale now. He's one or two local, these were local children going to the Catholic school. Mm -hmm. And this is the girl in the girl section there. I'll go on from that. That lady, that nurse, that sister there is Sister Mary Rita. Because I've been trying to get as much information as I can about this here. Youngsters getting ready for school. Anybody remember any of the nuns down there? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 <coughs> now this is demolishing the greenhouses. Because it was a wall enclosure, you imagine seven acres. And they were self-sufficient in a lot of things. They didn't go down to town all the time and go to Asda or wherever it was to do a bit of shopping. They had a lot of stuff they grew themselves. And say my father was very honoured to be there. This is inside the downs, if anybody's been. This is the main yeah. entrance now. Yeah. The main stairway. And this is, I showed you the photo earlier on, but this is a, a picture of the library. That was in the downs. I put this in because you're all from up Camberon and Druth and all like that. I thought I've got to put Ale in. This is where I come from, see? This is just a glorious view of Ale here. <laughs> now, Miss Frances Ellis. I told you the downs was, say, you know, in the 1880s. She came to Hale in just 1900. And she came with her sister. They came from London, and she had the amount of money equivalent today to 14 million pounds. Now she started the Haven, down, which was a school down Penzance, it started by Miss, Miss, Miss Frances Ellis. So she started the Haven, and then she built, she had little Catholic schools and all built, and churches built all the way up to London, spending her money. Now, there's the Downs, right there. Of course, the, St. Michael's Hospital was called Banks Croft. That was the name for it before St. Michael's was built. But when, and in 1901, Miss Ellis, being a Roman Catholic, she invited the daughters of the Liege to come over, that's the nuns that we know, to come over and live, and live in the Downs. But she, she handed everything over to them on the condition that she could live there for the rest of her natural life, was what they agreed. Of course, then she decided then she would give over all this land, the Banks Croft, to build a hospital. I don't know which one there. Here we go, yeah. So, to build a hospital there. Now, they started building that in, they got permission, of course, and they started building that in 1912, or having it built. Now, it was opened on the week before the First World War. So there wasn't no fanfare or nothing like that, just a week before. I point this one out, all this bit here, because this building is still here. There's a balcony down. A lot of this stone come from up Melanier, if anybody knows where Tolroy is, if you're going to Halston from St. Michael's Hospital, you're going across or going up there. There used to be a big mine up there, Melanier Mine, and they took the granite that was left, or salvageable, and they put it into St. Michael's Hospital. This now is the car park. You'd have a ticket if you stayed there too long, eating grass, wouldn't he? This is an, see, a very old picture. Now you've noticed one thing about this picture. No statue there. So we know it's early. Now, some, I've got to read some of this, just to say this was when it opened in, say, in 1914. The first stage of the new hospital, on the ground floor, doctor's consultant room, medicine room, and a ward to accommodate ten beds. Um, now, what I will say is the ten beds down the bottom, if a, it wasn't no NHS then, but if people didn't have a lot of money, could have an operation. And there were beds upstairs for people that could afford to pay for it, and then they would, um, that would pay for the ones down the bottom. Everything's all right. Keep talking, Trevor. There's no problem. <laughs> they were on the first floor. There was operating a private room. You go on. 
Right, so they, they started with 10 beds, as we said, and was, of course, private ones. Right? In 1927, it also became necessary to enlarge the hospital, bringing the total number of beds up to 54. The hospital now become firmly established in 1932, a further extension was needed. This was to, to provide or provided by enlarging the, the sun balconies and bringing the bed numbers up to 73 beds up. So this was from 1927 up to 1932, so they were building, as I said, they were open in 1914. I put this one in, this is a very old photo because the chapel, when they first started, because they were nuns and all, when they first started, the chapel was in where the drawing room, where the books were. That was their first chapel. And this was just a chapel that was there. That was a chapel there. They had that built. It might be another view of it in a minute. But that, the big main chapel, if you go in the bird paradise now, and you can actually, go in the car park, you can actually see the chapel in there. The big chapel. That was completed. 1927. I put this one in. This is what they call, we call the nurses' home. This is where the nurses. I told you about Henry Jenner and Kitty, but when Mr. Rawlins had the Downs built in 1880, this was built as well. And this now is the Mary Therese. I won't go into that now, but for a minute, this was now, is now the Mary Therese house. But this was where Henry Jenner and Kitty and come back to Cornwall to live. This is on the wall, actually. Now, I'm not, I will point out, this is me being a bit thin, but it says there, Kitty, 1854. Well, the books that I've read, it's 1853. It don't matter, does it? Because I wasn't born then. So <laughs> I, I aren't going to argue with anybody when they was born and when they died. Let's just say roughly, but there we are. But that's on the wall now. Yes. Of course, these are buried over in the land. Oh, I'm, you can't read all this, but there we are. This was when, when it was going on about the, um, some, the Friends of St. Michael's was formed, you see, in 1945, and always trying to raise money. They were a fantastic group of people. And on July the 3rd, 1951, we know that the Children's Ward, so that opened in 1952. Another distance there probably was, was in St. Mary's. These are just some of the nurses. Now, a lot of the nurses came over from Ireland, and then they went partly over up to Cheltenham, and then they would spend some time down in the nurses' place in um, Hale itself. Well, Matron was in charge then, wasn't she? Yes. Matron was in charge. That young lady there, that lady there, is M. Long retired, and she spent all her, all her career, over 40 years, in St. Michael's. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they got Miss, and you remember Miss Flown? Mrs. Miss Flown, she was their tutor. Graduation day. I don't know who this gentleman is, but he was, well, he was a local um, reverend up there. I don't know his name. No good. And of course, we, we could never do without volunteers, could we? I know my friend there is Pat Atkins. I don't know any of the other ones. but uh, I You did? They were. Are you in there at all? No. That must have been your day off. <laughs> <laughs> This is just the nurses in the Marie Theresa. Some of these photos are older, I know, but um, here we go. This is when the Marie Theresa house has gone from the nurses, as I said, because 1976, the nuns come back. They, they let the NHS take over St. Michael's Hospital in 1976, because they couldn't afford to keep running it as it was, and with all the extensions. So this was opened in 1983. I think that's 40 years ago. This is what it's all about, is people that have long-term um, disabilities that can spend both, whatever time they want there, really. If you want to do a bit of cycling or something, that's all right. 
Since the women's ward was now housed in the new block, it was decided to turn the old woman's ward into a maternity unit with 10 beds. My mother never went up, or I say, I expect most of you know, I'm one of 13. 10 boys and three girls, but I don't think none of us was born in St. Michael's. Alterations were carried out, and this unit opened in July 1963. The first baby born there was awarded a presenter with a silver christening cup by the Friends of St. Michael's Hospital. 1963 included a new waiting room and extension to the veranda of the men and children's ward. I can't, I can't read all that, I, even I got my glasses. There we go, look at this, this is the most important bit. The first operating theatre in St. Michael's. You come round from there, you don't know where you would be too, will you? The lady with a big black thing looking over you. But they were the best of the best, there's no doubt about it. They were absolute. Because um, a lot of people used to say when they first, when they first opened in 1914, a lot of the hospital wasn't used for, you know, to the full capacity because people were afraid, they didn't know. When they really got to know what it was all about, different. Like going in a vet surgery, in there, really. <laughs> now, this is the woman's ward. This is in the late 1920s. A lot of beds in there then, look. Now, this is before 1952, because you've got men in the bed there, and you've got children over here, and men. So there was a mixed ward for children and men up until... 1952. This is what they used to do with trying to raise a little bit of money. Variety shows, Eric Gems. This was passed over to me year before last and I gave it to the hospital because it was a bit crumbled but it's just nice for them to keep. Admission, three shillings in the balcony, front of the hall was two and six. <laughs> and the remainder standing was two shillings. Here we are. This is the children's ward in 1952. I think some of us went around our tonsils out. This is where um, you see that they got a, a little place down right in the bottom of the garden. I have been there. I should have a photo of this here. A Rose Catherine in 1924, of course. Miss Fenster Ellis, 1930. That there, you already split because of the sun, but look at the blue sky down there. Look at that. It's always like that down there. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the statue of St. Michael's was put there in 1933. And this was in memory of Miss uh, Frances Ellis. Now, in this church, the big, well, big chapel that they got, there is a, a I mean, I've not been in there, but they say there's a life-size model of Jesus there on a cross. And that was gifted by a gentleman that lived in the bottom of the garden. He was a, well, I can't call him a tramp, but he was a man that was homeless, and they let him live in one of the sheds down there. He must have made a bit of money somehow or another, but before he moved on or passed away, he gifted that. And this was in 1927. He gifted that to the Main chapel, church, they are. This is what you would see now in um, whether I got it wrong, church or chapel. I do apologize and I'm sorry, but you know, um, but that's what you would see in, in, in the Bird Paradise Garden now. Now, this is in some of the garden now. This is where all, all the nuns were laid to rest. This is right down the very bottom. Yeah, the gate is not, you weren't able to go in there or not. When I think of all the hours that my father spent on there, working in them gardens, walking around them. Because you can go around the gardens now, can't you, Mark? You can go around. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, these are old yew trees. All the way down the paths there, yew trees. 
You know that yew trees are very poisonous to animals. Can have no horses, cows, anything like that, anything to eat it, you know. It's so well laid out and so well and it was designed and it's still the same design as when it was with Dando setting when he designed it. Now this is just a, a place of quiet contemplation, whatever they call it. You could go down there and you could go down there and sit down in peace and quiet. This is again is inside, that's not a very good picture, I'm sorry, but this was a staff in nineteen ninety nine. Quite a few there. That gentleman up there is my cousin, actually. Now, we used to have the um, garden plates, didn't we, down there? So, Michael's garden plate. Always, they seem to they put out the, um, a statue of St. Michael. They would put it out before the fate, and then they would turn it around, and they would all pray for dry weather. I don't, think they, I don't think they had many um, yeah, wet days, I can assure you. Sure? They didn't have very many wet days. No, that's right. That's yeah, right. I can assure you. Yeah. My friend used to put it up. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 We don't know this uh, sister or the matron, I should think, that is in charge. He's People there were the, the Ryans, Ryan's farm down in Hale, Walter Ryan and his wife and all, that's what they were. But did a lot for the, for the um, St. Michael's Hospital. Friends of St. Michael's, St. Ives, they raised hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds for um, St. Michael's. They still have the same no. Well, I say no, yes. I went there about three years ago when I did a talk about the history of Ale and they had a garden fight. I was indoors, but I said yes, but not very often now, you know, with the, the circumstances. Yes, yes, it did. Mm -hmm. I just put a little bit of this in as well. I'm, I'm just watching, the, and I've got, I've got plenty of time, but I'll give you some more information in a minute. But if you're coming up to Michael's Hill just past the mill pond, that building is there, and that was the old schoolhouse for Harvers of Hale from in the early 1800s. But Henry Harvey wanted people, but they couldn't read or write really, but he decided that he would get um, youngsters learning so they could, because when you went to work for Harvers, you might have been nine, ten year old, you spent your life there, but so they could go to um, school in there, and it's called the old schoolhouse. Now this here is right opposite the schoolhouse. You're coming up Foundry Hill, it's on the right, there's a bit of a rail in there. Now this is Drover's Row, what we would call it. This is where all the horsemen for Harvest lived. You worked for Harvest, you lived in them houses. And of course the man who was in charge of the horses, he had the extra bedrooms up top. But up, right up the end of this row, up there, is a place called Ivy Cottage, and that's where Kitty Jenner was born in 1853. She was born there. Again, I put this one in. This is Pratt's Market down Foundry there. That's the, um, well, it is a market now, but that opened in 1845 and that closed in 1967. I know it closed in 1967 because my twin sister was the next to last person married there. And I think the gentleman that was marrying my twin sister thought you can't stand no more of us because there's hordes of us. <laughs> so they shut the doors after she left. <laughs> but, it, but it's now it's now a little market now, you know. <laughs> Anybody remember Todd's furniture? No, yeah. Todd's furniture, yeah, that's just down by by the mill pond, that is, you know, walls, you know. Because this was where Lloyd's Bank was, it's Lloyd's Bank in Foundry, right in the square itself, it's single story now, right next to the post office is Lloyd's Bank, but that was a cinema from 1901, and then it burnt down in 1935, so they took all the top story off and they just, because it's not Lloyd's Bank anymore, now it's empty, empty building. 
put this one. This is just a this is St. Owen's Church, built 1888. And this is a load of houses here now. Biggest cylinders ever in the world. It's all to do with foundry, really. And, you know, and then a lot of these people that work for Harvest went, and their children, some of the children went to the, because um, I said Harvest was still there until 1903. The biggest diameter cylinder ever made in the world, anywhere in the world, is 12 feet. And it was made right opposite White Hart. Right opposite White Hart. And that was for, in Holland, to drain the Harlemer Lake. And they started, they built, started building them in 1845, and they finished them by 1848. They built a ship to take them over to Holland, and they started in 1848 till 1851, and they drained the Harlemer Lake, and they created over 112 square miles of land. Oh, now, Hale Station, anybody know where Asda is now? Asda there, well you've got little gardens there, you know, it's just in there. But there was a station there from 18, first station, 1837, in, in where that was. And that was demolished in, 18, in 1948. There you are, look, there's a cinema there, you see. I just put this key on, this, this is where Asda is now. It's a big old, I don't know if you know where Asda, where Asda is. They got permission now to build houses out here. They got permission, right? But if you go in by Phillips and go and get a pasty, you're standing here and look over there, a part of the key is all caved in again, come out again with the tide. That was built in 1818 or finished off in 1818, that was. And, uh, is actually built on straw bales. That's what you, didn't yeah. have. You, you didn't have concrete then. You had straw bales. That's just like this electric works there, ICI works, SO works, steam packet there. If anybody go over to Wales, if you go over to go over a bit of walk, or over by St George's Walk, as you call it, there was a row of houses there, five houses, but where the swimming pool is, there was five houses there in a row. And this is Melanier Smelton Works. This is what a Smelton Works would look like. There's a man in there and there's horses there. But these were massive buildings. And um, this was from what, 1837, that one was, until 1916 that worked. Now that's the end of that. But shall I just show you a little bit about Ripper Scholar? Would you like to see a little bit of that? You've heard about what's happened recently, don't you? Yeah. What's happened recently? Well, I went, I mean, 18 months, but if I just put on, I'm only to like show you 10 minutes. Well, it's all good news. You see the North Quay, where well, you've got flats down there for a million pounds there. But I've been 18 months working on it, but we now got a Ripper Scholar walk. Oh, wow. All on the North Quay. And a big plaque, which I've been involved in for 18 months. So I pulled over Trevor and Kim, that's Rick's son and daughter. Got them in over from America to unveil the plaque. So that's what they've done. That was recently, so I'm going to America in, in um, October. I've never been past Canberra, really. <laughs> I'll turn this off a bit and I'll show you a little bit of Rick the Score, which I think is interesting. Is that all right? Yeah.